Last time on the rise and fall of Bush Gardens. So it's unfortunate, but it looks like it's not going to get any better. It's it's more for me now. It's becoming more of a question of when than if. When, it's really just oh, when. Yeah. When will At this they reach point? the tipping point that I really won't want to go anymore? It's gotten there for me. It's only open guys. Keep, keep... Oh, you're there. Well, as I was gonna say, they're really alpha guys from my love away. for open guys makes me come back. Yeah. If they took that out, then, then I, I really yeah. wouldn't go back anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm hopeful that they will find the magic again because it was such a unique place and it's just becoming a um, like everything else, you know. It's still far from Cedar Fair. And yeah. It's definitely yeah. Six Flags. I mean, that's bottom of the barrel for me. Yeah, but I think that actually is a pretty good way to put it, where it's they're they're strange. They're, they're not their own thing anymore. They're they are trying to be like other parks too much. Hmm. Incorporating well, yeah. too many elements from other parks and it doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. They have no identity anymore. Yeah. It's just yeah, they're very much losing their identity. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I don't want to think of it as like a slow, painful death, but, you know, I, maybe, maybe they will. We have survived. Awful top 40 pop music. We have survived. Lackluster new rides. We have survived another trip. To Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Virginia. We did it. We got it all in. We had a great time, I think, in the end. I'll go as far as to say great. Where do we start? Do you have the map? All right, let me get my, uh, my map. I need my drafting table to like, put this map out on. Jesus Christ. Why is any park doing the full piece of paper, the full thick piece of paper, too heavy stock? What are they thinking? I mean, you need a little pocket size thing. I guess they figure like phones are so big these days. Everybody carries their <laughs> phone in them with the park um, or into the park. So like, we'll just have a giant like map. Are you supposed to like roll this up? Like a scroll? <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do with this? I think it's that they wanted a map made out of paper so that it's a little more environmentally friendly is my guess. What, instead of like the laminated plasticky yeah. brochure material? environmentally friendly well it's not like hand hold friendly or pocket friendly <laughs> that's for sure well it's it's fine that it's made of paper as you know as long as it doesn't get wet it's all right it's just i wish they would fold it for you so that it made it easier to put in your pocket instead of you having to fold it yourself and then it gets a little messy yeah i don't know why it's the new thing and then a couple other parks kind of copied well, what's Bush Gardens funny. was the first place I ever saw it, and then I, gu I guess it was the Greater Sea World Parks yeah. and Entertainment that was doing it. And but now I feel like a few others do it. Well, too, right, Kings Island. Uh, sorry, not Kings Island. Kings Dominion definitely does. The funny thing is, they still make it out of that plastic, that lemonade uh, yeah. plastic material. <laughs> so that's like even stupider, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> Just fold it for us, guys, please. Please and thank you. So, looking at this, I just wanted this to have as a guide. Um, okay, so last time we were at Bush was... What year was that? 2012? 2012. Okay. So, it's been, been a little while. been a full five years since we were there. Uh, we really didn't know what to expect. Uh, I, I really had no idea. I, I didn't know how much further the park may have fallen. We did our episode, The Rise and Fall of Bush Gardens. And I don't think that uh, it's totally come back or the fall has totally stopped. Uh, it may have slowed, though. I feel like this five years wasn't as rough as the five years before that. Mm, yeah, I, I think so. So, right off the bat, in vad r <laughs> Invader. invade r in Invader. It's Invader. Just put the E in it, guys. If you want it to be Invader, just spell it. Invader. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like what a, this is. It's, it's, it's kind of like uh, a stupid, like, uh, apps. You know, like phone apps. Yeah. Spell things wacky, and maybe it's like that. They're doing, like, a phone app trend with the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a phone app. It, it's, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's sort of what's going around right now. Um, removing vowels 
is sort of a thing a lot of companies are doing. Um, yeah, I don't know why the R is capitalized. That's just weird. Yeah, so yeah, it's 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 just R with no E before it, and then also capital. So <laughs> whatever. Um, all right, it's uh, it's a little Woody, a little GCI Woody. GCI Wood with uh, steel supports. Yeah, went steel supports on this one. Odd choice, I think. I don't really know why mm. you'd do that here. Is it cheaper? I assume it's cheaper, but I don't know why they need to save money. <laughs> I mean, they already saved money on uh, making it small. <laughs> it's, yeah. They didn't splurge on this one as far as the size and scope. Right, it's a modest size coaster. It's less than 100 feet, I think. We should know, shouldn't we? <laughs> it's like, what is it? 80? 74 feet. Uh, it's a modest 74 foot drop. It's like really kind of a junior ride. I don't know why I was imagining that it was going to be a little bigger. And then when I did see it and finally ride it, yeah, it definitely felt like more in the realm of a family coaster. Right. But it's it's 74 feet, though. It's not a, it's not really no. junior, though. Yeah. Uh, and, and it wasn't like it was that slow or soft. It wasn't that light. It's like it really isn't a junior ride, but it kind of came off that way. I think it falls into a weird crack a weird middle ground <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's in uh, new france wait uh, right straight in the back of the park so it's supposed to be french canada for those who don't know uh they really wedged this thing in there shoehorned it in uh right in front of the, uh, the train station back there and like half under and behind the log flume so it uh it totally and permanently has changed the look of that whole section. Right, so there's no more woods back there. They chopped all those trees down. It's just a gravel pit where the coaster is. The coaster itself, yeah. They, they didn't even plant any grass or trees. Yeah, not that nice looking. No. For for that park. No, it's very ugly for that park. Yeah, in the context of that park, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I mean it, it, it destroyed the view of the scoot, which is the log flume, from that covered bridge. There's a bridge that leads from, from, from that New France area into the Germany area. And uh, you had a great shot of the log flume and part of Alpengeist. And now there's just that ugly coaster behind it. And I, and I say ugly, um, again, it's actually, I mean, for Six Flags, it actually be, look really nice. <laughs> It'd be a nice installation for Six Flags because it's not like it's over parking lines or anything. I mean, <laughs> okay. it is like gravel, but like landscaped gravel. It's like gravel <laughs> with a purpose. Like it, okay. it, that part of it is is okay, but it, the steel supports don't look as nice as all wood. Yeah. So that fact alone makes the steel supports an odder choice, considering that it's this park, and everything it really does look so nice, and it would look so much nicer if it was all wood. So it, it's a little less nice looking with that, and then either way though, just having that wood coaster right behind the log flume. You know, right behind, but kind of right up against it, is it's a bit much. Uh, it's a bit much, especially for a park that is in no way out of space. Uh, this park is is not like uh, Hershey Park, or I'm sure various other parks out there where they're really out of free available space. And, Knotts. You know, oh, Knotts, absolutely. Um, Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland. Uh, not unlike those parks where they would have to remove a ride or or shorten an existing ride or build over existing things they they're not in that in that predicament right now they could have put this somewhere else where it would not have uh in any way infringed on an existing uh ride's location or or just general scenery around the ride uh and yet they did this anyway so that's what really baffles us uh we talked about it a lot when we were there like why the hell did they put it there right uh, I don't even know if they know. Who the, who the fuck knows? <laughs> because this park has made a lot of baffling decisions in the last uh, 10 years or so. Right. Um, it, it totally obscures the uh, the path that leads to the entrance of the scoot. Uh, you could easily miss that now, uh, which is not really a good thing for that ride. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of bad all around with that kind of stuff. The entrance to the scoot was always weird. They, okay, they yeah, never true. had it right on the the midway there right on the walkway yeah you always had to kind of look for it yeah but now yeah it's totally uh obscured and good luck finding it 
Yeah, because it almost looks like it would, like, all you had to do is put a gate there and it would be like the backstage entrance. Right. That yeah. runs behind uh, Invader, is what it looks like now. It, like, really is really unassuming. You wouldn't necessarily think uh, this is the the way to go to another attraction. Yeah, I, I, I think they have a sign there. That they did tells ask, you. They knew, what they, I, they realized it. I mean, they put a sign this first season. They didn't have to wait. Like, they, they knew right away, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, shit, that's not, <laughs> that's not intuitive now to find another ride there. So we better put a sign guiding people they did and you know they did um advertise the fact that invader interacts with existing attractions that for whatever reason they thought that was a great thing i don't <laughs> I'll, I'll, i mean i don't have to even think about it i i don't i think i think I, I, it is a great thing in certain circumstances but this park it, it shouldn't have it this park is all about it that it's sprawling and everything has its own sp- space and uh and it's just it's the most it's the most beautiful theme park in this country, certainly. And uh, this just kind of ruins that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see that that Maury's Piers style, <laughs> all the rides on top of each other and interact. It works there. It even, you know what? For what it's worth, I'll give it to Hershey. Hershey made it work for themselves. I didn't like it there at first when they first started doing it the first time or two. But it's kind of become their thing. And now that I go there and, I, and at least I'm used to it, I kind of dig it. I kind of like it. I kind of feel like... It works for that park as well. It's, a, it's like a Hershey thing now. That's what they do, right? And, and so, good. Good for them. But I don't like it at Busch Gardens. I don't think they should go this route. Oh, right? they, they did um, wall off the queue to the ride. I thought that was an interesting choice. They, they put up a wall to sort of separate the ride from the rest of uh, New France. Okay. I guess it's yeah. supposed to be like you're entering a fort or something it's part of the theme yeah yeah well, i think it's actually you're leaving right you're you're it, it's almost like that's that was the wall protecting the development of new france oh, okay the, the colony or the whatever they would have called it you know it's a settlement and then uh the entrance to invader is like the their big war machine the big dragon headed the wooden dragon head some yeah, kind of war machine is. or some kind of trojan horse or something yeah. that like is kind of coming in through the entrance of the of that wall. Oh, that's what's supposed to be. Okay, I think that's sort of how I take it. But that that is nice. That is a bush touch where it's not just like the speed rail uh, switchback pad that you can just see from the midway. Like, <laughs> there it is, right there. There's your next uh, forty five minutes. You know, mm. it's not like that. You do go behind that wall. It's kind of nice. Uh, the queue itself, though, is is really sho- just as shoehorned in as the ride. Right. You know, you're just waiting under like that first section of the scoot, and it's that's actually not very nice. Because it's almost too small and like too, it looks too last minute rushed. Like yeah, there's there no really space. theming in there. Yeah, it's just it's just a lot of wood, which is nice. It's not metal speed rail. It's also kind of small. Yeah, like the queue matches the ride. It's there little, isn't a switchback pad or anything. It's uh, it's just one big uh one way. Uh, yeah, I think so. Right. Or I should say one kind of smallish one way. Yeah, it's, the whole thing is kind of undersized too for that park. Ah, man. I don't know. The more I'm getting down on it again, I haven't thought about this since we, since we left. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was all disappointing. The station was really small, too. Very yeah. tiny station. Like, just barely enough room for, like, what, maybe three trains worth of people? Like, Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't very big. There was a little theming with the row numbers. They were shields. Um, oh, yeah. That looked cool. That was cool. Little theme there. And that's it, right? No other, the actual, the pre-recorded ride announcement was not themed. I didn't perceive any theming. I didn't hear any any themed music in the in the station either. And no no tagline, no like uh, dispatching tag uh, line or <laughs> phrase or whatever you want to call it that this particular park is generally known for. Mm-hmm. Like. Not get ready to brave the Black Forest or travel at yeah. the speed of fright or any of that oh, stuff. Cool. Those are the, yeah, or um, soar like the mythical griffin or whatever it uh, is. Something yeah, soar on the back of the mythical griffin or I, whatever in it the is. in the in the grip of the of the mythical griffin. Something like <laughs> something that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't have them all memorized anymore. I, 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 <laughs> as you can see, we, we're not as sharp as we used to be on these. But um, <laughs> it, it's just another thing about this ride where the whole thing feels last minute. The entire ride. So yeah. It's very slapdash. Uh, yeah, good way to put it. Just feels like below their quality. Yes. It just feels like it's it doesn't match up with the rest of this stuff in this park. It's just really weird. 
even verboten, which listen back on our on, on old episodes, like we're not thrilled with. But even that still at least attained the same level of quality of everything else that was before it and in the park existing with it. It does have theme voiceover and it does have the tagline as you leave and it does have a ton of theming and all that good stuff. Whereas this ride is, this invader is sort of lacking on all these points. The trains are themed nicely though. There's two trains and they look cool. One looks like a, it's made out of wood and another one, I guess they both look like they're made out of wood. One is like, uh, like the natural wood look and the other one is painted with uh, some sort of green Viking design. I don't know, but they look cool. All right. Yeah, they did do that. They didn't, they didn't skimp on that by doing custom themed cool looking trains. There's still the Millennium Flyer trains, classic GCI, but uh, yeah, but they're, they're custom with the design. Uh, short ones though, right? Short trains. Yeah. Only what, seven cars? Yeah, I think seven. Yeah. So that's like the shorter version of those trains. So everything about this ride, a little, a little small, scaled down. All right. The ride experience itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my first uh, reaction when it got to the brake run was, all right, let's not acknowledge that. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing next? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how I felt. It was just sort of like, all right, we don't have to talk about that, right? Because whatever. And I think we didn't until when we got back to the hotel, maybe. <laughs> uh, between the two of us, we didn't. Uh, we were with some other people, though, so we did hash end up having a discussion a little bit, like walking out away from the ride. But uh, the ride is just very, like, ho-hum. Uh, we were not impressed. Yeah, I was really hoping for a apocalypse. Uh, or I mean, I didn't ride Mystic Timbers, you, but... You, yeah, that was a big thing for me. I mean, I had Mystic Timbers on the brain. Uh, it's really fresh for me right now, and I loved it. It's really right there with Apocalypse, although I have to re-up on that one, and with really GCI's Masterpiece, Thunderhead... It's, it's right up there, and uh, GCI has been doing such great work lately that I was really looking forward to this ride as well, and was very disappointed at the fact that this one just is not on the same level. It's not on the same level as for Bush and what they usually do at this particular park, and it's not on the same level as what GCI is doing in the last five years or so. Yeah, it's so shocking. So it's sort of like a fail for everybody. It's a fail for the park's end of it, the things that they're supposed to supply, uh, the kind of the trappings around the ride, and then it seems, seems like it's kind of a fail for GCI and what what they're doing lately. It's just okay. I mean, it, that's the thing. It's, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't necessarily bad, but knowing that GCI is capable of so much more and also, I guess, liking... Uh, obviously, we like the intense rides. We like things more intense. I just... I wasn't pleased with this. This didn't hit the spot. Didn't satisfy. Yeah. I'm sorry. It just didn't. The impression that I got was it, it was really trying to do something. <laughs> yeah. It was trying very hard, but it just couldn't pull off the maneuvers. Yeah. It, 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 it like it tried to be something. It was good. It starts good. Or fine. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> scale it back immediately. It's like, yeah. Um, no, it, it had a fine start. The space was so constricting that they weren't able to get the drop right off the lift, which GCI almost always does. Oh, I didn't even realize that. That that that, mm. that, that right there was sort of a departure from what GCI normally does. But they made managed to make the the turn it has to uh, make to to line itself up for the for where the drop's going to be. Fine, it's like that's good. It's it's, it's a nice little speed turn, and then the drop is good. Uh, it's a tunneled drop, or, or kind of a, whatever roofed. I guess it's, a, it's not a complete tunnel. It has like that yeah. roof all over it, and you know that adds a little element. That always makes things. It's like a perspective thing. It makes it feel a little steeper when you're on it. Uh, not that it's that gradual. It is kind of steep, and uh, it's a fine first drop. And you do get some speed right off the bat. And it, so right off the bat, it's kind of like, all oh, right, here we go. And then I don't know. It's like everything it tried to do. Uh, maybe not literally, but kind of figuratively. You could feel the wheels turning a little bit. You could kind of like, you know, you could kind of see what they were trying to do uh, in some cases, like, you know, before they, it even got to it or maybe like right when it was doing it. And it was just kind of like, oh, I kind of get what this should be, but it's not that. Yeah, sluggish is a good word to describe uh, this ride. It doesn't pull. It just it, it just ne it needed some more speed, I suppose. But it just felt like the elements weren't quite there either. Like the uh, the bank turns were just not banked quite enough. 
the drops just didn't pull pull down quick enough, just like a half or a quarter <laughs> of a second late, and like it, it, that makes all the difference though. When you when you want some some air or a, just a quick surprise moment, a quick change, uh, or the bottom falls out from under you, or where you jerk over to the side real quick, uh, the kind of the hallmarks of GCI, the great GCIs. And this one, like, it did some of those things, but, like, everything was, like, a, like a hair late. It's you know? it's then, almost like GCI wasn't as into this project. Yeah. <laughs> or I, or I, I think I may have even said at the time. You did, as you were walking away, yeah. Oh, I did say that. Oh, I was going to say... You I, said that, but then you, I think the next... Keep going. Oh, I. It's almost like they let the intern design this one. Yes, there you go. <laughs> it's it's like it's it was the B team for sure. Yeah. Or the C team even maybe. <laughs> GCI just did Mystic Timbers this year along with Invader, and you loved. He it. It said it's a an incredible oh. ride. So it's not like they've gone downhill this year. It's just no. this ride. No, that was just. Um, this is an anomaly. It's not right. Uh, this a is trend. Just, this is just. A, a bad day. It, I, GCI has not over the hill. They have not lost it. If anything, they've gotten better. Yeah. Like, right I, now, so. they're doing some of their most consistent work. So, no, they're in great shape. Uh, this is just uh, an outlier. Uh, and it's unfortunate that it's in this park that yeah. really didn't need this. And and they're, uh, they're not uh, a stranger to confined spaces because Mystic Timbers is kind of in an awkward spot, right? Yes, very awkward. They had to fit that in and squeeze it in. White Lightning at Fun Spot. Oh, uh, look is, no further. Is really uh, they they really had to figure out a way to stick that ride in. Yeah, and that actually now that's a that's a really good thing to bring up. Uh, just looking at GCI, that's the ride that had the much higher potential to fail, right? Uh, and to come out not very good because uh, that was not even their style. Just an L a, a L shaped out and back footprint. That was a, a first for them. They had to make that work. And that came out like you would think that they had done that already like three or four times yeah. before that. And they hadn't. And at least it may be small, but the general footprint of Invader is still a, it's what they're used to working with, GCI. It's just, it's just like a whatever, like a rectangular you know, area. And yet they just couldn't do it. They just... That's the, now, okay, let's move on back to putting the blame on Bush Gardens. <laughs> uh, where I think it belongs because now I'm wondering how much of this is what Bush wanted or what they requested. It seems like for whatever reason, Bush Gardens Williamsburg right now is like, is going for this, this sort of family category of, of attraction thrill level. You know, they want the ride that everybody can do. Like the, as soon as you're tall enough for like any kind of roller coaster, um, all the way up through, you know, grandma and grandpa. You know, I want the whole family to go together. And they kind of were going for that, I think, with Verbolton. They did something completely different with Tempesto. And that, that I guess, was just going for thrills. You know, we'll get to that in a minute. And uh, now with this, with this Woody, it's like uh, they're going to finally do a wooden coaster at this park, which was pretty monumental to begin with right a first for them uh a, a real moment and yet they wanted it to be i guess a family ride i i think i think they wanted it this way so i don't even know if gci is to blame or if this is you know bush wanted they may have requested like all right we know you guys do um a lot of quick turns and, and a lot of banked angles but you know make sure the angles are less than what you normally do and Make sure the drops are a little less steep than what you normally do, and we don't want it to go over 100 feet, and we're, we're going to give you this spot to work with in the park so it's really tiny so that you're forced to do something small. Uh, you know, I feel like maybe that was part of the problem. I could definitely see that. Or the problem. I don't know if it's part. Maybe that, maybe that was the problem. Yeah, I would definitely believe that. And then, I don't know. I don't know what the hell. Why, why does Bush feel I need that? Verbolden's already not... You know, that, that replaced the wolf, and I, I feel that's actually... Again, all the things we've said about Verbolton aside, I I would say Verbolton is about the same intensity level as the Wolf. I think that part of it they got right, right? Yeah. I mean, would yeah. you say? Yeah, I'd say. You no, know, Wolf was for what it was. Was also it was it was a family ride, but it was like on the higher end of the thrill spectrum for a family ride. You know, too, too much more, and it would have not been. It was kind of right there on the line. 
And I feel like that's kind of what Verbolton is. Verbolton is kind of on that high end of the family thrill spectrum. And they operated for decades with, with the wolf as being the, the, the family ride. And so what's the problem now with just Verbolton? Why do you need something else? Right, that's a good question. What spot does this fill in their uh, lineup? You know, I don't understand why they felt they needed anything else uh, this on, on a family level. You know, they did do the Sesame Street Land, uh, and that has like a, a roller skater family ride, or it may not be a roller skater, whatever. Who gives a shit? It's yeah, little, we're not going to look at a little kitty coaster, though. Whatever. I forget who makes it and, and what model it is, but uh, they have that, like the Grover thing, Drunken Grover. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> you know, like Grover's drunken ride. <laughs> Grover got drunk one night. He yeah. got shit faced one night, and then <laughs> took the kids out for a ride the next morning. He wasn't sobered up yet. Yeah. Um, I just don't get it. I, I don't know. I don't like the fact that they used the first, and I'm sure it's going to be the only wooden coaster in that park for a long time to come. I don't like the fact that they use that as the this will be the next family ride, even less intense than for Bolton. You're doing the Woody. Go all out. Do it. Uh, you could have done, put a second roller skater or something like that somewhere else. I don't get what they were trying to accomplish with this ride. What does this do for them? I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. I mean, I know location wise, uh, the show shoehorn thing, I feel maybe they were going for, they thought they needed uh, a new big attraction in that particular part of the park. Okay. Uh, maybe that part of the park was getting a little old and dated and dead. You know, the scoot is, is, is great and all, but it's an old attraction. It's an old concept, log flumes. Yeah, they had moved the scrambler over there a bunch of years ago, but that, that didn't add anything. Uh, you know, the train station is just a train station, um, which is great, but why do people want to get off on this train station if there's not a lot over here? So they felt like, all right, let's put something new over in that spot. I understand that, that theory, uh, if that's what they were thinking, but again, in this park, it just I don't think they needed it. And, and 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 then I think they should have just went for. I wanted to see the next Thunderhead. <laughs> that's what I wanted to see. I mean, maybe that's. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna. I don't think that is selfish because that is not. I like them rough, but I like things that a lot of the mainstream people don't like actually. But Thunderhead's not in that vein. Thunderhead's not too extreme. No, I don't think so. That's a very well balanced ride. Yeah, and everybody loves it, and it's loved, and uh, that's what that park needed. Uh, and then even for the size, I was hoping that maybe it would be like White Lightning. Because rides don't need to necessarily always be the largest to be the best. They don't. You can do a lot with a small footprint uh, and a modest height. And then I was hoping it would be that, and it still it wasn't. Yeah, I think Invader is uh, the worst coaster in the park now for me. I even enjoyed right, well, Verbolton more. Yes, uh, I agree. Uh, uh, notwithstanding Grover's thing... Yeah, sure. Uh, yes. Worst. It's the worst one. Bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Bottom of the barrel at that park. They took the barrels off of La Scoot, and uh, this coaster is the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> this okay. new one. They should have put... They, they, you know, the train should be barrels. <laughs> and this is the bottom of them. I just want to bring up that the theme of the ride is weird. It's supposed to be that you are a Viking invading... New France, invading Canada. Right, the French colony in, in, in North America. In Yeah, right. I mean, that did happen. The Vikings came here before Chris Columbus and everyone else. But that was back in, like, whatever, a thousand <laughs> AD. <laughs> it was, like, really a long time ago. So it in that sense, it kind of doesn't make sense because you're supposed to be fighting the, uh, the colonists, I think, but the Vikings came here before there were colonists. There was just the... The, the native people that were here. The, though the Vikings never had uh, a, a war with the French colonists. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't think so. Okay, so this is invented. They made this up. I think, yeah. They fought with the native people that were here. Okay. I mean, they tried to make a colony here. It just didn't really happen. It just right. It didn't really pan out. Okay. I, I read up on this a little bit. <laughs> this is uh, twisted history. The, the real point that I wanted to make was we are the bad guys. In, in this scenario. We're supposed to be the Vikings. Well, because we're, we're invading riding the land. We're riding the invading Viking ships. Right. That's, that's what the, the the roller coaster trains are themed to. And then after the ride's over, when you pull into the station, there's a, a, a banner that says, like, victory, I think. I think it's victory written in French. Yeah. Uh, so 
they defeated the Vikings. So they they were able to fight him off. And there's a Viking helmet with like an arrow through it. Yeah, like yeah. pinned to the wall. Yeah. So we lost. <laughs> we, the riders of this new ride, we're the losers. That's so weird. It's like they killed us. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking stupid, Bush. Well, it's appropriate because I did feel like I lost <laughs> when I got back to the station. I feel like I lost. I mean, this ride blew. But why would you do that? Why would you have your theme be where you don't come out victorious or you survived or anything? No, you you lost. You're dead. You're theoretically, you're like, the reference is made. It's not going to be explicitly said, but that you died. Yes. So strange. <laughs> Is any other ride like that? I don't know if that exists anywhere else in this country. <laughs> that whole thing was weird. Yeah. It's it's funny, you know, it, the things they did do, the thematic elements, the big entry wooden dragon, war dragon thing you walk under is, is, is looks really cool. Yeah. It's, it's a great picture spot. I'll give it that. The the, the thing is too, it, it's sort of like a, a wink and a nod to the to the park goer. Uh, it's Invader. They did do a, a, a Norwegian Viking invasion theme, but it's also like the ride itself is invading the existing park. <laughs> you know, and they and it's not. I don't think it's that's an, unintentional. I mean, they it, it says on the the coming soon poster. It was like you know they, again they they touted the fact that the, this ride was going to uh, interact and exist around the former and still existing attractions. So it's fighting with those other attractions. Right. So it's like, you're right. It's like it's it's invading Le Scoot and the train station. It's like... To an, to an extent. And then and it's sort of what they're going for, I think. In that sense, sure, that's clever, but you don't want to do that for real. I mean... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, and I think I said this uh, when we were there. To me, that's kind of neat. And it'd be fun if this was like a... Some kind of temporary thing. Okay. Know, not, not a roller yeah. coaster, but... If you wanted to do like an invasion festival or something, and then it was like something was in, you know, maybe they, I don't know why a park would do this, but like you brought in a few <laughs> like uh, trailer mounted uh, flasks or something yeah. and put them right in front of some, uh, an existing ride that's really well known in the park and then did like an invasion theme thing for that summer or, or whatever, like a, a, a temporary promotion. But then it was going to eventually go back away and, and, and revert back to the original look. But I don't want to see it permanently done. Yeah, I don't want to see it like no. It's like now Will Scoot's whole area is 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 marred for good. You know, this is not going to go go away in a yeah. season or two. So you know, it could be cool if it was done in a different way, but not to do your new coaster and to permanently alter the landscape of your log flume. Yeah. I think it's a terrible idea. Yeah, and with Will Scoot now, surprisingly, it, it doesn't change that ride experience as as much as it looks like it would if you're standing off the ride. Yeah. It's really just, what, it's like one turn, kind of, <laughs> on the scoot. Because there's one part where uh, I think it goes through the lift hill. Yeah, you're right. So aside from that, I, I actually surprisingly didn't notice Invader. All right. When I was on the scoot. Yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying. Um, I mean, you're not in the woods anymore, it just stinks. I got the same notice thing. that. The, the, yeah, the scoot, I mean, comes out fine. As long as the ride's still there, it's fine. It's just, yeah, it's not as nice to be on it. It's not as nice and tranquil as it was. You know, it takes you out to an extent. I know for us, we have a lot of nostalgia with the scoot. So I I, um, I was like in the zone. I was in the nostalgia zone no, okay. when I was on that ride. So in some respects, that was going to make it so that everything else was kind of being tuned out. And then, I mean, I guess if, if, if anything, the most important part of that uh of that ride really is the, the the final drop it's the it's the the lead in to and then the drop itself because that's where there is some theming and it's always been you go into the actual like lumber mill and uh you encounter all the the saw blades and shit and it's great and, and they they really did do a good job of enhancing that with the that major rehab they did a few years ago and that part of it is completely then un interrupted so to speak uh by invader i guess it's fine that, that part of it i feel like i would get used to more uh on subsequent visits and i'd be fine with it uh yeah the, the obvious thing is is you know, look, if invader had been a great ride I, we really wouldn't give a shit right there then you we'd go. be like you know all right you know what i'm totally fine with this because i'd rather not have i don't want to not have invader now yeah you know but it wasn't the great ride that it needed to be 
And also uh, something that I didn't realize actually it didn't click in my mind when we were there, but I did. Uh, I was going through some pictures uh, after we got home. Chain link fence around that ride. Oh, and that's really lame for this park. <laughs> yeah, that's the fence that separates like the train tracks from the ride. And I don't know if I can think of anywhere in Busch Gardens, Williamsburg, where that's the case, where it's just a chain link. Usually they always go for an upgraded fence type. They'll go wood. They'll go a nice wrought iron. Just another <laughs> one of those things where it's like, you know, ugh. That's a, that's a bit of a downgrade for this park. Yeah. Uh, definitely should have been wood, considering the fact that it was a wood coaster. You know? And, you know, when we were waiting in line for another ride... I did overhear a group of people talking about the different coasters in the park, and they all agreed that they didn't like Invader. <laughs> so it's not just us. Good, because uh, Invader's not great. All right, we got to move on from that. Again, it's, it's not the worst thing ever, but it's... Uh, it really isn't. It's it's more of a... It's a, it's a relativity thing. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's relative to what GCI can do. It's relative to what this park can do. Yeah, right. Uh, it's It's kind of bad on those levels. So that was disappointing. So I guess in that sense... The fall continued. There you go. That's the continued fall of Bush Gardens. All right. Well, there was one other roller coaster that was new for us this time. Tempesto. The, uh, what's Premier Skyrocket 2. Yeah, shelf so. model roller coaster. This, uh, it's the shelf model in every way. It's not enhanced. It's not expanded. It's not larger. Yeah, it, it didn't look horrible. I mean, the, the problem was I knew what it was. Uh... <laughs> the small gimmick ride that it is. So this was one that we really were not looking forward to. We uh, we, we were all about how uh, what a bad decision this was for Busch Gardens. Uh, such a large park, such a major park, to put something like this in. Not only is it just a gimmick, it's also uh, very low capacity. And we were just thinking, oh man, this is, what a, what a dumb move. There's going to be, <laughs> uh, you know, hour waits every day. Uh, it's just two Six Flags. Why does this park want this? Right. And Six Flags does have one of these. Yeah, they do. At Discovery Kingdom. They were they did it first. That's the yeah. first one, right? So just we were not really into the whole idea of this. So we did this one in the morning. So we uh yeah, we figured let's do it early before uh line builds up. It it looks good. You know, even when you're right in front of it. Like they did a good job. Mm -hmm. They yeah, put some they, theming there. The queue's nice, it's got the theme, it's it's uh it's what it's a circus act. It's like, it's like a daredevil, yeah. Yeah, daredevil theme, but but it's like I guess it's someone who does an act and like tours. I think right, yeah, it. someone who tours and round and and does some kind of some kind of daredevil feats. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of neat because although it's like it really doesn't belong in that park, and and it's a Six Flags type of thing, when you put it in a park like this, it does sort of you know. You know, people look up and see this thing, and they're like, oh, wow, what's that? <laughs> you know, it kind of brings a ride like this to an audience that might not otherwise ever see it in person. Yeah, that's true. You know, they only would see it on, on, the, on the Six Flags commercial. So I guess that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, I don't know if it gives Bush Gardens a pass completely as to, you know, to, to do it at all, but it's kind of neat. It's a silver lining. This is not the first one we've done of this. We did Lake Compounds last year. What's one of the major differences, uh, the restraints? Yeah, at Lake Compounds, just lap bar. Tempesto has over-the-shoulder straps. I just remember, uh, not that it's been that long, but uh, have you ever heard of uh, Comfort Collar? Is that what it was? Oh, what they called it there? Yeah, it was something really something stupid. Like and in the, in, the, in the recorded voiceover, it just says it like eight times. Like, it just never <laughs> stops. It's like, take your Comfort Collar... And get into your comfort collar, and then make sure your comfort collar is adjusted, and enjoy your comfort collar. It's like, just stop saying comfort collar! Or wherever it was, or comfort harness, or something. It was comfort something. It was like... All right, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it move was on. so annoying, though. <laughs> so annoying. Exactly! Move on! Stupid voiceover. Uh, tight squeeze to get into these things in the first place, and then that added restraint made it harder to get in. But once you're in, nice bucket seat, so you're sitting back, it's nice, it's fine. And uh, it's, it's a fun little ride. Right, we enjoyed it. Yeah, we we both really actually enjoyed it. I, I it's I got it more here than I ever did at Lake Compounds for whatever reason. For whatever reason, yeah. yeah. This sold me 
on the premiere Skyrocket 2. It's a neat little thing. It, it offers a really nice thrill in teeny little space. It's a, an efficient thrill. Very, very efficient. Uh, it's it's still everything that we said about like compounds. Although, actually, I don't know if we, we just did a video. We didn't. I don't think we ever actually yeah. did an episode about it. So we'll say it now. It, it's uh, it, it's more like a flat ride. It, it's it's kind of <laughs> like it, it's it's a weird flat ride roller coaster hybrid experience. It, it, it's fun. It's good for what it is. Yeah, the launches are fun. Even the fact that you go backwards once for, you know, a second is, is kind of cool. Even that. That second forward launch to get you up and to, uh, to, the, to, nice the, height. to yeah. the very yeah to the very top is really good, nice and forceful. And when you get to the top, you're going pretty slowly through that one barrel roll or zero G yeah. roll. And uh, you get a lot of hang time. It's a cool little thing. <laughs> it's fun it's a lot of fun we had a lot of fun with it there we ended up doing it three times yeah actually we like, couldn't get enough of it really and i know we said it then we got to kind of eat our words <laughs> it's like, yeah it turns out it's really kind of fine in bush gardens williamsburg it, it's it's no i i maintain it, it it shouldn't be there but it ended up being okay in the end it's the best flat ride that park has. Yeah. It's what it is. That's what it is. It's the best flat ride. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, not a full coaster experience. I guess it's all, all relative to how long you have to wait for it. Uh, we we had like a one or two train wait and just did it three times just about in a row in, in the morning. And that was perfect for that. Uh, it's not a ride that I'd ever go back to at night. I don't think it's a ride I really would go back to. I think it's like every time I go now, I'll just be like, I'll do it two or three times in succession and then be done with it. Yeah. But for those couple of times you do it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so in that sense, not a bad addition. And we didn't wait, but we did see, uh, we got, got back to that area later on in the day and there still was no wait. So uh, interesting to note that I don't know if it's just even just the way it looks. Is it just too intimidating for that crowd? But people are not flocking to that ride. Uh, the low capacity didn't really become a problem because no one really wants to do it anyway. <laughs> like it seemed Apparently. like it, it just maintains that like that station weight of people, just like maybe a four or five train weight uh, at any moment throughout the day. So that kind of helps it though in my book because if I don't ever have to wait that long and I can just do it and it's fun, then fine, keep it there. I still maintain all my original thoughts on it. Yeah, they still shouldn't have really ever done this, but it, it worked out okay. And they should have found a better spot. It, it, even that wasn't as bad when I saw it in person. You know, yeah. putting it up right in front of uh, Apollo Chariot's lift hill. But yeah, again, we said it before, this, this park has space. You know, why couldn't they find <laughs> a um, proper place for this thing? This, well, not I mean, as I guess they're not just as bad no, not as bad as as Invader, but I guess they're they're trying to get people over into that area. Yeah, Festa Italia, which which is fine. Yeah, I guess you could say that about maybe Tempesto and Invader, kind of back to back roller coaster installations where they're just trying to bring people to areas of the park that they feel are waning a little bit mm. in excitement factor. Just too many rides that they're maybe they're solid, but they're aging. You know, I mean, the Rapids is solid, but. It's old, you know. The La Scoot is just solid flume, but it's old. So I guess you're just trying to draw people into those spots, which okay, fine, but still, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I didn't think it was really a problem where it was. When you're on a Paul's chariot, you could easily just ignore the fact that it's even there. Really weird though, how like I don't know if, if uh, Apollo's chariot makes Tempesto seem larger or if Tempesto makes Paul's chariot seem seem smaller. I don't. I, I'm not really sure what was going on there. But because they're almost the same height, I think those Skyrocket twos are about 150, right? 150 feet, yeah. Yeah, and then Apollo's Chariot's lift is only 170. Apollo's Chariot gets its hyper status from the drop into the ravine, but the lift itself only 170. So it is really weird when you're almost at the, uh, or you're essentially at the top of, of Apollo's Chariot, and it's like you look over, and then there's the zero G roll. Yeah. To uh, Tempesto, like almost at eye level with you. So all right, cool. You know, we enjoyed it. I'll give Bush Gardens that. That is fine. Just a fine move. It didn't make me like the park more, but not a fall moment either. Mm -hmm. uh, just fine, uh, which I was uh, pleasantly surprised about. W what else was new for us? The 
we just want to go into the look of the place. The park still looks beautiful. Uh, that part of it, I feel, has not slipped at all. Yeah, that was so nice to see. Looks great. Still, by far, best landscaping you're going to get inside an amusement park, or a theme park, I suppose. Uh, they, they win the, that most beautiful golden ticket every year. They do deserve it. I will give them that. Hey, I want to I wanna nominate them for a new golden ticket, though. Best park maintenance. <laughs> it doesn't exist, but it should. And this park should get it. Because uh, they the rides uh, also look beautiful. Still look freshly painted uh, like they paint them every year. Yeah. I don't know if they really do or not, but it looks like they do. And that was always a Bush thing. Yeah, always. That hasn't changed. Not At least the Williamsburg day. thing. Right, yeah. When we say Bush, we, again, always really Williamsburg. <laughs> <laughs> the one we know the best and the one that... Uh, it's just, that's the only Bush. It may as well just be SeaWorld Tampa. Or just something else. Zoo, Tampa. Whatever. Uh, this is the that only... was the first one, though, and Williamsburg was the last one. <laughs> oh, this is the only one. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah, everything beautifully maintained. That was great to see. Now, uh, one of the things that I was afraid of was that they ruined Benbury Cross, which is the uh, entry area. What? That's in England, kids, for those of you who don't know. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you mean, you mean Bradbury Square? I mean Bradbury Square. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about now. Yes, Bradbury or Bradbury Square, depending on who you are. But yes, it's the entry area. And I know from pictures that at least for a season or two, or at least for one season, maybe more, uh, they had like they decided it was not colorful enough, I suppose. <laughs> and they decided to like make the, uh, the Globe Theater, which is the prominent structure in that area, that land, they decided to make it all multicolored and basically just crap it up. So uh, they have reversed that and it is back to uh, the nice beiges and browns that it should be. A few too many Union Jacks in there, I'll, give a, I'll say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a lot of flags. Yeah, they had to put all the British uh, flags, but it's like just, it's, it's too much of the same flag. Even if it was every other, maybe with something else, which is solid blue or something or reds or I don't know, it's just too much of the same thing. Everywhere. Right. I mean, I didn't mind it, but yeah. I, I no, it's I can understand it's that. that. That's a nitpick. I'll, I'll, yeah. Which honestly, there's too many larger problems. We shouldn't be nitpicking. <laughs> um, that's a, that's if everything else was perfect and all we had to do was nitpick. Yeah. Uh, granted. So that part is 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 good. There's even a couple of things where they uh, where they realize they made a mistake and they scale back. Uh, I guess in that same vein, uh, we may as well skip. I guess we'll skip around just to stay on topic for a few things here. In the fest house where they destroyed. The uh, the gazebo, the rising gazebo bandstand stage that they used to have. And it was this cheap, just like risers with like painted black or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, they've enhanced that. They've gone back in and they've, uh, that looks nicer. When we were there in 2012, the stage looked like it was made out of plywood or something. It looked like total garbage. It looked temporary, if anything. Yeah. And it was like your school you know, they turned the school cafeteria into the, <laughs> where the choir is going to perform for one night. And yeah, and they had on some sort of a fairy tale show. It looked like it was aimed really towards little kids. Oh, terrible Disney ripoff. Yeah. Is what it was. But yeah, they have gotten rid of that now. Thank goodness. And the, the stage looks permanent. It looks like a permanent stage now. Yeah. And they themed it up to look like a giant cuckoo clock. I yeah, think giant German cuckoo clock. Yeah. Like, like, like you're on the inside of it, kind of, almost. But Right, you can see the gears moving and stuff. Right, it's, it's kind of cool. And they brought back a nice German show with German dancing and singing and all that, like they used to with do. With the original costumes. and right. right. No live band, but they do have a live violinist, I suppose. They had, like, yeah, a li uh, one live instrumentalist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's that, funny, they even advertised that. Yeah, <laughs> as well they should. Um, yeah, uh, did a violin thing in the beginning, like a violin solo, and then uh, there was some accordion. Um, oh, okay. She came out with an accordion later. Oh, that, oh that's right. I forgot about that. So, uh, October Zest, that's what it was called. Uh, October Zest! So, Terrible uh, name, but, uh, uh, but I'm glad they brought that back. So I'm going to say, not as good as this is Oktoberfest mm -hmm. from years ago. But much better than what they had in between. So overall, an improvement. So just in general, nice to see that uh, there's a little bit of a, of, a, of a park management listening to the people kind of thing. And it's not just us either. Other people had problems with some of that crap too. 
Right. Obviously, because people rejected that wannabe Disney princess show that they did <laughs> yeah. for a few years. And they realized, oh, fuck, we went too far. We got to bring back what we were all about. And they realized, like, people must have rejected that the, the entry looking like that. Turning into, like, it was supposed to be a 60s groovy flower power land or something. <laughs> and they realized, oh, fuck, people rejected that. So they went back. And now it's more what it's supposed to be again. I'm happy to see those things. Uh, Bush is not above admitting they make mistakes here and there. So I like that. That's great. Yep. So good. that's good. All good stuff. So back to the beginning, uh, Bradbury Square. In the Globe Theater, 4D shows are a thing of the past, unfortunately. That I'm not going to blame Bush Gardens for because, uh, and we've done a show about it uh, a couple years ago already, and, it only, and now it's that much more time has passed. 4D shows seem to be a thing of the past. They're dead, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. For whatever reason, people just aren't into them as much as they were. I, they're not drawing, I guess. They're yeah. I, drawing the crowds. What are the only ones left? I mean, there's Muppet Vision, T2, and what, Legoland still does? Legoland's, yeah, still very involved in the 4D show game. They're still doing show that. Game. I think that's kind of it. Um, mm, yeah. So, okay, so that's not necessarily all Bush's fault. They've been doing, though, like a, like a 60s, uh, some kind of 60s British invasion show, right? That's what they've been right. doing the last bunch of years. And uh, this year, it's called Brit Mania, and we did check it out. <laughs> yeah, you know, we would have done if we would have done the 4D show, whichever <laughs> one they were playing, even if it was Haunted Lighthouse, I still would have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, they could they could have returned any of them. I I would have loved it actually, but um, whatever. Uh, we did check it out. You know, it was a fun show. I'll give them that. It was a high energy, fun show. What do you think? I mean, I didn't really care for the show that much, but. I have a hard time blaming Bush on this one in particular because I think people do like that sort of thing. They they, they like um, rock music from the past. <laughs> yeah. So to put on a show, you know, themed specifically to British music throughout the decades, it, it, it went from the 60s to the up to today because there was Adele in there. Yeah, right. And And people like that. So I can't blame them for doing that. Although, I will say, <laughs> uh, there was at least one song that was not British. <laughs> I don't know how that got past people. They played Do You Love Me by the, I think it's the Contours. That's an American song. Yeah. <laughs> an American band. Has a British band ever covered it, though? Oh, I'm sure. You know. But that's also uh, Twist and Shout. It's like, okay. They, they were they were going, If you want to get real technical, yeah. They were going yeah. for the Beatles cover. Right. That's the one that everyone knows, but that's, that's also an American written song. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's so. And recorded originally, yeah. First. In here, in, in the United States of America. So, yeah. So, that's a couple of things were a little questionable there. But uh, it was good. I thought it was cool that they played. It was a live band. Yes. That was cool. Almost I appreciated all that. theme park uh, song and dance shows are done just to a track. Right, so a pre-recorded track. So it was very cool that it was a live band. And a rock band at that. Yeah, it's funny that the Fest House show, which you could argue is, you know, of all their shows, that should be their, their centerpiece show, uh -huh. doesn't have a live band. Anymore, yeah. But then the British Invasion show does. Yeah, all right. That is ironic. I'll give them points for that, for having the live the music played in front of you. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the band played fine. You know, the, all the all the music was performed well, and the, and the dancers were good, and they sang well and all that. You know, it was well, all done it, well. It was very well done. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was good. It's just, you know, not my kind of thing. Yeah. We both would have rather have seen Haunted Lighthouse, you know? Sure. <laughs> and that's, our, our I think, our least favorite of the 40 shows that have ever, <laughs> ever run in that park. But that's, that's why I keep bringing that up. Um, <laughs> or I'd much rather see, you know, one of the other ones that were even better. So, yeah, I mean, I'm glad we got to do it. And, and so it's nice that the theater is being used. It's not like if it was this was a Six yeah, Flags park, yeah. that theater would just be sitting there rotting. Uh, you know, of course. So the fact that it's being used at all is nice. Uh, I love the fact that it's still all the 40 seats oh, yeah. in the theater. <laughs> I saw that as soon as he sat down, like, oh, it's still the same seats. I'm like, are they going to throw water on us, you know, during one yeah. of the songs or air in our face or something? They should have done that. You know, backstabber. <laughs> do, 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 and then everybody gets stabbed in the back. <laughs> uh, like, why not? Uh, so, <laughs> so a fun show. We also checked out, for a, for a little bit at least, the uh, the Italian show. Oh, that's the, right. The show yeah. that's running uh, in that outdoor theater where you eat. In uh, San Marco, uh, or I guess just Italy, as it would be known now, and so uh, that was a, that was we didn't see the whole thing, so it's we really can't speak to it too much. But it's again uh, high energy, colorful costumes. It looked fun. 
Mm-hmm. It yeah. looked like like it was fine. And uh, again, live musicians, I believe that one. Or was it a mix? I think it was a mix. Okay. I think they came out and played some things, but then there was also a re- recorded track as well. That, that I feel used to go back and forth, even going back to when we were kids in the okay. '90s. I feel like a few years. I remember there they had like a like a band stand, and there was like a live brass band playing. I remember that the background. Yeah. But then there was, also, there was also other years where I feel like it was more just they came out and sang. Germany was always the live Oomphah band. Always. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that one used to go back and forth depending on what they wanted to do from year to year. And so I'm okay with that. I'm happy they're doing anything there. <laughs> so so good stuff there. Uh, anything else about the general look? We did, I guess that was we just did entertainment, really. That's what we just did. I guess I want to say thank goodness uh, everything on Pompeii still works. You talk about best maintenance <laughs> okay. in the park. <laughs> Pompeii. Holy shit, everything still works on that ride. I can't believe it. Yeah, that was... That was... Oh, that ride. Favorite shoot the shoots. <laughs> it's the best. I'm always yeah, loving the best. Yeah. What a concept. We're going to get people wet. Let's get them as hot as they can be first. <laughs> Let's just blow fire in their face, like, as much as we legally can. <laughs> as as close to their face as we legally can. And then we'll dump them in water. It's yeah. like, what an idea. I still don't know why no one else has done it. Yeah, yeah. 22 years later, it's still the only one like that. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's funny. Not even Jurassic Park does that. Because Universal loves their fire, They love too. fire. <laughs> so it's funny that they didn't even do that on that ride. They couldn't even have one poof of fire there. Uh, yeah, or anything. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And so does everybody else. Oh, yeah. Every boat we were on, and we went on that multiple times. We did, like, three, four, as five. We o- as we always do. I oh, think like four times. As we always do, yeah. Yeah. Every time we go there. And, like, every boatload, like, we were on, the people are gasping and, like, loving it. Everybody it's loves it. It's a crowd it. pleaser, yeah. You just, to this day. It's just like, a, I guess it's just like a visceral thing in humans. Like, you can't not love it. Fire and, and water. It's yeah. perfect. Elemental. It's perfect. <laughs> Still great. Yeah, all the fireworks. They didn't scale it back one bit. You know, I guess it's perfect. I guess they figured out just the perfect amount of effects going back to 1995 <laughs> that they were able to still maintain them all. Yeah. They didn't go too far and have a couple things that were only going to work for a few seasons and, and then go away. You know, it's still all there because it's simple enough. It's yeah. just enough. It's perfect. And it's still hilarious that if you sit in the first row, you're <laughs> going to get your feet wet. <laughs> They yeah. never corrected that, and I kind of love that they never corrected it's like, that. <laughs> it's like the water level is a little too high at the top or whatever, and it's like, yeah. Um, or the angle that the boat goes in is it's too, 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 too severe or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It, you always get uh, a whole uh, bunch of water come over the top of the front of the boat when it dips in off yeah. the left, and it just douses the feet of the people in the front. And, it, and it's so funny. Every time we rode it, every time. it's like everyone either – forgets or they haven't been on it before and they just yeah. don't know and it's always as soon as you come off that lift you hear the water psh, and then all you hear is oh yeah in the front row every time oh ah! every t- get every time and then we're in the back just laughing and clapping yeah like oh I got him. <laughs> every time that's a perfect thing for uh, just a little extra thing about that ride yeah so good the uh the statue still falls way too early uh, I know that that changed after like five years though. Yeah, that's been like since like 1997 or so, or maybe 2000 at the latest or something. They they changed that, and um, they used to fall in row three, like right in the middle of the boat, like specifically because yeah. I would sit in that row because that's yeah. where it fell. And now it falls like before you're even in the room, it's like already tipping. It's like yeah, it's way too early. But um, no, it's like if you sit in the back, by the time you get into that room, it's almost totally fallen over already. It's like you you kind of almost miss it in the back. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, it's really bad. You know, it's like we still don't care. It's, it's, just, it's just too much good going on. And I mean, and it's still there. I mean, it's they could easily, there. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of other parks would have just turned it off. And now it would just be a stationary statue. So it still does fall, and that's that's still good. Yeah. So, great shit, man. That ride. Yeah. 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 And I'm the gl- perfect amount of wet. Perfect amount of wet. Oh, everything about that ride. Beautiful to look at from the ground. Yeah. While you're waiting. Uh, I mean, while we're just on the positive, I mean, Roman Rapids is still awesome. Oh, oh. still. Ah, uh, it's like I was about to say the best Rapids are my favorite Rapids. I don't know if it's the best ever, but it's like. But I love it. It's, it's up there. It's so fast. It's still a top five Rapids, for oh, sure. Oh, definitely. For sure. Definitely. Um, great waterfall coverage. Yeah, it kind of falls into the middle of the raft. I so feel like everybody they, gets a little. They something. changed it a little bit now. Yeah. yeah some... it did, no, it did not used to be that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. It used to be more like roulette. 
you know, where if Some you had me sitting on that side, then you get it. And if you you didn't, if you weren't sitting on that side, then you escaped. But now it's kind of like everybody gets a little something. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's I just, think uh, a good time on that. Yeah. Fog was the only thing that wasn't working last time. Fog was not working. Yeah, this is, in the middle of the ride, there was a really foggy section. You go, you couldn't see anything for a minute and uh, or a few seconds. But yeah, and yeah. then the waterfalls like appear out of that. Yeah, uh, that wasn't working, but uh, still awesome, still awesome ride. Yeah, and then and you know, I, I, I we shouldn't waste too much time on it, but you know, the, the other coasters were great. Mm-hmm. Loch Ness, yep. still great at what it does and what it is. Solid, uh, solid still ride. solid, still so much fun. Apollo's Chariot. Fucking uh, awesome. Ton of fun. Great B&M Hyper. Well, we had such a good time on that. Griffin. Awesome. That ride's incredible. Powerful. Love that ride. The first word that comes to my mind about that ride is power. Yeah. You know? I feel like we were enjoying that more than ever. I feel like we had oh, some, yeah. some of our best rides ever this time. I just, I cannot understand how Shikra is so kind of whatever, Blah. just okay. Just, yeah. And Griffin is so amazing. They're practically the same ride. Is it just that few extra feet, or what is it? Yeah, I. It's it's like the intangible. I don't know. It's so weird. But yeah, Griffin, one of the all time greats. Really, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's the vertical drop gimmick, but yet it's like <laughs> it stacks up with just like rides in general. It does actually. It, it, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It yeah. somehow does. It, it, yeah, it, it's like you feel just as satisfied when you get off that as a ride that has like you know five or six or seven inversions and does more. Yeah. It's weird, but it works. I love that ride. <laughs> love it. And it's good because I, 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 I cannot miss Le Mans. Yeah, Thankfully, right. because yeah. it was such a good trade-up that I don't have to worry about missing Le Mans. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm at peace with that. I always was. As soon as I rode Griffin the first time, I, I was okay. Uh, Verbolton, um, I had the best rides ever on this. I mean, it's only the second time I've been to the park with this ride there. But uh, I enjoyed it a lot more this time. I'll, I'll never get over the wolf fully uh, and the decisions that, the, that that were made to get rid of it. But uh, maybe maybe because it wasn't so fresh, I was able to relax more and just take Verboten for what it was. Uh, maybe that was part of it. But I, I just found it to be fun. Like, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. We did it twice, and, and I enjoyed it. Like, even the second ride wasn't forced. Like, I felt <laughs> like I wanted to go on a second time. Like, it was fun. Yeah. I had fun with it. I, 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 I'm kind of surprising myself with that. I wasn't I, looking to have fun with it going in, I'll admit, but I did. I think I, I enjoyed it about the same as I did the first time. Yeah, you did not get on board with, with this still. Yeah, I, I agree with you, or I was, I had the same feeling about the wolf, where I was, I didn't go into this angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like last time. So that was good, but at the same time, uh, I, I still think the ride is pretty crappy. <laughs> it's just, it's very herky-jerky, and just, ah, uh, it's a mess. I think it's just a mess of a ride. I, I can't debate that. Uh, it, it, it's it's messy. It's it's a lot of shit going on. See, it's funny. That feels more segmented, and, 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 and it's more unsatisfying than, like, Griffin, even though Griffin is, like, two short little sections of a ride. But for Bolton, it just, it doesn't, it, it's like it never really gets started for me. I know what you're saying, and I, I, I'm not, like, going back on anything I said from five years ago when uh, when we did it, but at the same time, like, I, I just, I don't know. I, it was still, it was fun. It was, like, the sum total of the parts, for me, at least this time, was a fun little experience. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I really almost, I can't explain it almost. It just, it was just, like, okay. You know, no no single part of it, though, is the best of, any, of its type. It's far from the best enclosed ride. It's it's not the best outdoor dropping ride. It's not best launch ride. It's not anything. But um, it was it was fun. It was I, I thought it was fine. I was I was okay with it. Yeah, the lunches are forceful, so that's good. Yeah, you know, and and actually the drop track did work better this time. Than it se- did the first. It time. seems that they must have ironed some some kinks out. Yeah, it yeah, it, it, was, um, it was doing well. It uh, it drops more smoothly. And more quickly, and more quickly, yeah. yeah. It, it, they, they added more of a thrill to it. It, it feels like it, it works now. <laughs> yeah, uh, they figured it out, so that's good. And I know, like the people we were with, were like they really got into that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's still very unique. Uh, it, it was not the first ride to ever do it. It was the first ride in this country, though, right? Yeah, I believe so. And is it the only one still? Five years is. later, has anyone else done it? 
I don't think so. Yeah, no. So it's very unique. Well, yeah. it's like I can understand why other parks wouldn't do it because it kind of breaks up the ride too much. It, it's part of the problem for me. It's like, yeah, I do like that drop track thing. It, it's fun when I'm on it. Yeah. And it is a unique element to have. But at the same time, you're you're chopping up that coaster experience just too much. Yeah, it's too much of a, of a halt. Yeah. Halt in the action. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, you know, for Bolton, it ain't no wolf. I'll tell you that. No. It'll never be. But uh, I was more okay this time. I'll always miss the wolf. We all will. And then Alpengeist. Holy shit. That's still the best thing ever. The ride still got it. Yeah, that is that is one of the uh, the best roller coasters ever built. And I'm, I'm happy that of all the rides there, we got our fill of that. I feel like that's the one we definitely got our fill of. Oh, yeah. We rode the fuck out of that thing. We hit double digits we with that. We must have gotten, right? oh, yeah, 10 to 12. 10 to 12, yeah. By the end. Yeah, we, we just kept doing it. We ended both nights on it. Um, we got multiple rides without getting off both nights. I believe it was a, uh, it may have, I think it was a, a quintuple, quintuple tap the first night. I believe we did five. Was it a quintuple? Wow. I think, and then we did a quadruple the second night. Okay. <laughs> okay. We uh, sacrificed a couple rides to do the front. It's amazing how good that ride is in the front, but that's still a back, back row ride all the way. Mm -hmm. I found the, I think it was the left side I enjoyed the most. So okay. I, think, I think the the, the backmost left side seat is my favorite. Uh, on that side, I felt like you got the extreme snap on both ends of the Cobra Roll. <laughs> Whereas the right, I think you got an actually more extreme snap than any one on the left. The first the first side of the Cobra Roll, and then, but then the second was kind of gentle. Mm. So it was like, or what, like what would you rather have? One snap? Like relatively that's, gentle compared to that right. real extreme snap. As gentle as a ride ever gets, but yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, whatever. I, that's a fucking great ride. I, we can go on about that all day. Yeah. But I'll, oh, I'll guys. Never get enough of that ride. Yeah, people you, were not really riding it, though. It, I was it, sad to see, yes. Never had a wait. It was always like a, just a couple train wait. Yep. That's, that's not good. It's not a good sign. I don't like that. I don't know, it's just too much for people these days? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I almost felt, yes. I used to use the word graceful when referring to Alpengeist uh, a lot. And I guess I still would uh, in the overall scheme of things. But I have to admit, you know, with some of the newer stuff being a little... That's being more like the new definition of what a graceful coaster is. You know, Alpengeist is like a little more rough and tumble. Yeah. You know, than, than that. Uh, so in comparison, in, the, in context of it being 2017 now, I, I feel like Alpengeist feels more rough than ever. Mm. You know, maybe it has aged a little bit and maybe it is technically a little rougher than it used to run, but I don't think it's that much. I think it's just more like in comparison to what else you're riding around it. And also maybe other people now uh, where Alpengeist, that was the smooth new thing. Now that's starting to feel rough compared to other things. And now maybe, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to think about that. That's all I know. I know what Bush Gardens is capable of, and I don't even want to think about it. Okay. Alvin guys better be there forever. For the rest of my life, at least. That <laughs> was all great stuff. We had such a good time with all those rides. The scoot was great. We already mentioned it. The new uh, rehab version looked great. Rode great. What a drop. And then, what, Dark Castle was the only other notable thing there. Uh, uh, yeah. Dark Castle. Now that, you know, uh, now that we have these Justice Leagues, uh, those rides at the Six Flags parks, uh, I feel like Dark Castle dropped a notch. It yeah, I had the worst rides I ever had on Dark Castle this uh, time. Didn't seem as fun as the uh, the Justice League rides. Yeah. We weren't enjoying it as much. I still liked it, though. It was still fun. But just, like, it, it could use a, a nice rehab, a nice... Uh, no, more than that. It needs like a no. You need to reprogram. It needs new 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 screens. It needs like yeah. It needs well, to that be too. enhanced and reprogrammed and, and done in HD and all that good stuff. Yeah, it needs it. It's it's getting a little past its time, unfortunately. It's twelve years old already. Yeah, that's Believe crazy. It or not, twelve years in, so it needs a little something. It needs a little uh, sprucing up. Uh, I still had fun with it. I'm still glad it's there. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's the only virtual thing now. I mean, they used to have a 4D and a simulator at all times back when we knew the park as mm -hmm. kids and now, you know, no more 4D and no more simulator, at least for this year, the last couple years. Yep. Yeah. No sim. I mean, it's coming back 2018. Some version is coming back. And we'll see how that is. Yeah. Yeah, so with that being gone now too, for at least this season, Ireland is like useless. 
Oh yeah. We didn't even walk through that. We only walked through it to like exit the park. Both nights. At, at yeah. Night. Yeah. We never did it during our day. Yeah. There was no reason to. Yeah. That whole side of the park. Because we, I mean, we didn't see the show that they have. I think we. They still have the Irish step yeah, dancing show. We had seen it in the past. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen it. So it's like unless you want to see that show, there's no real reason to go there, or unless you really want the food, or that the gift shop that sells a few magic tricks. They still have that, right? They uh, I don't know. Do they? They still have it. the pot of gold. Oh, at least, oh, all right. Yeah, they still yeah. have that. Yeah. They never completely got rid of that from Hastings. <laughs> like, they always kept a few of the magic tricks and whatever in the back wall. But that's yeah. funny. Yeah, you mentioned Hastings, and, and you brought up, you said... Uh, yep. So they're they're back to where they were with Hastings. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, for those of you uh, who, you know, we knew the park in the 90s. Uh, at that time, that side of the park was lacking. It was kind of falling apart. People weren't going there. And then one by one, the attractions were closed in that area and it got to a point where there was nothing going on it was like a dead zone and it's funny they, 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 the putting of uh, Killarney Ireland was a breathing of new life into that area and it worked for a few years and now it's just deteriorated over the years and now it's right back to where they started it may as well be 1999 again where it's just, <laughs> a, just a dead area of the park it's just like it came full circle yeah unbelievable so yeah that's it's all dead uh, throughout the Ireland even though it still looks nice and then after that, it's just um, the area we used to refer to as lame land <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> it's lame land because it never had anything going on. That's yeah. That that area has never really been developed though. What? Oh, the walkway. It's just been like uh, the animal exhibits. Yeah. It used to be where you picked up the monorail to tour the brewery. Where they have yeah, where they have the wolves now, and they have that pet shenanigan show over there. Yeah, it's, and they have a little Coke. Uh, whatever oh yeah, lounge area Coke Gardens over there now. Is, yeah, Coke Gardens, uh, or something like that. Yeah, whatever it was Spread Eagle, Spread Eagle Fair, <laughs> whatever it was. <laughs> Thread Needle, I believe it was. Uh, <laughs> Thread Needle Fair and the Thread Needle Bridge like led into it uh, back when it was still all England. And now uh, it's kind of like it's. I think when they put Ireland in, though, I don't know that that area's ever been officially annexed by a country ever again. It's, yeah, always, it's it's it really is just like a, de a, a dead zone uh, yeah no man's land yeah, yeah so to speak it used to be an extension of England but then you know, after Hastings was gone then it, it never became Ireland anything it, or, or France it's just sort of nothing so that area of the park you know talk about trying to shoot maybe they should have put some pesto there <laughs> you know yeah. it could have fit for sure like where the old monorail station was mm. or something you just breathe life into that area because there's not even a reason to go over there right. really weird all right, is that it for our attractions look? So what's left? Food? Food. Wish I could eat there right now. <laughs> uh, hasn't lost anything. So, so happy to see that that Bush Gardens Wingsburg oh. food is still just as good as ever. Yeah, see, taste. We're happy to taste it. <laughs> happy to taste it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was uh, excellent. Just as excellent as ever in a few... Uh, areas maybe even better. Yeah. Maybe a few things have even been tweaked and improved a little. And it was delicious, <laughs> is what it was. It equaled delicious. Uh, it also equaled uh, pocket emptying <laughs> <laughs> levels of just getting everything because <laughs> we had to try it all. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's never been the cheapest meal, but uh, this is a case of you do get what you pay for. Uh, you got to pay a little more maybe uh, than even the average park out there, but you get excellent food restaurant quality in many cases uh best in in any theme park environment certainly in almost every case right and quick uh, service quick service all quick service too because yeah and excluding the, like the fancy restaurants oh, at epcot and oh all that, stuff. that whole yeah 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 talk about well, quick service well, we have to exclude the alamo too and uh, canobles right because you know that's the best ever <laughs> <laughs> sure god damn it as i roll my eyes folks <laughs> we should we got to go through marco polo just really quick that's the new or newest uh, sort of tweak to the park's uh, food offerings where they uh, took the old uh, cucina, right? You think it was just cucina or, uh, or was it restaurante? Yeah. Was it restaurante? I think that's what it was. Uh, or was it cucina de la piazza? God damn it. Ristorante della Piazza. There we go. See? Uh, La Cucina, that's the one in uh, Festa Italia. Uh, now it's called... 
Marco Polo <laughs> Marketplace. Oh, is that it? Okay. Like I that. knew it was something more than just Marco Polo. Marco Polo's Marketplace. There you go. Yes. Uh, you get to eat your way through Marco Polo's travels. It's just a, it was just an excuse to get a couple other cuisines into the park. Essentially, yeah. they wanted to get the Greek and they wanted to get the Asian. Essentially, is what it was. So um, we weren't like so sure if it was a good idea. We also didn't like the fact that they got rid of the the classic cafeteria style, uh, where you load your tray as you go and move along. So they still use that everywhere else in the park. Uh, we love it because it seems to work the best. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why every park doesn't do it this way. Yeah, I don't know why that's a bad thing. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, the only exception I'll say is um, maybe the way they do it at Wizarding World is, ah, is, is better. Okay. Where you place your order, they show you to a table, and they bring the food to you. Maybe that's better. Well, because that's like a, a neat little like uh, uh, quick service, table service hybrid thing. Yeah. So it's like you get a little extra special treatment, you get shown to a table, and then... They bring it out for you. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I do like that. That's cool. That's like one of those. That's where like now that they've done that, like every Disney Universal place should be like that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, they need it in those parks. Yes. With the crowds they get and all that good stuff. Uh, Bush always did so well, though, uh, with the the cafeteria line style. We, they, uh, we didn't like that it. they changed that. And and actually, I don't think we were wrong. I, that, that came to be what we thought it was going to be, where it took longer to get our food unfortunately so i mean the food itself is still just as great as ever that restaurant thank goodness i mean it's now it's all these different stations but one of the stations is still italy and they still serve all the same stuff they always used to serve so the original uh ristorante uh menu is still there intact and that's great and and that's what kept us happy the other stuff we tried a little bit of it and it was it was all okay no, no. It wasn't all, all it wasn't the, all okay. The Chinese food was terrible. Okay. If you like malt Chinese. No, this was worse than that though. You think it was subpar? Yeah. No, because oh, I could eat Panda Express or some shit. Oh. This I could not eat. All right. I I know I kinda of put it out of my mind because I tried it first before I started eating my Italian, and then I just went on from there. Uh you're right. The chicken was really gross. <laughs> it it tasted like it was supposed to be orange chicken and uh it tasted just like it was made of all pith. The white stuff in between the rind and the actual flesh of the of the fruit, where it's just it's just the bitter part. It was so bitter, it was disgusting. It was like, yeah, it was the chicken was a little nasty, and like, uh, you got it with rice. Got it with the rice. The rice was plain. The rice, uh, yeah, it was by fried rice, but yeah, it was, but it was very bland. It didn't taste like much. Yeah, yeah, you may as well just gotten white, really, yeah. for what it was. Yeah, I mean that was that was not very good. It's it, it's 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 essentially like Panda Express that sort of thing. The Greek was. That was okay, though. The Greek? I only had one piece of it. One Greek bite, was excellent. But, um, That's up to their standards. I mean, it was lamb. They actually, yeah. I don't lamb know in a theme park. if another theme park... No, that's not true. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, Universal does serve lamb. They had that lamb and Guinness stew. Almost okay. forgot about that. But still, rare. Very Weird. rare. Weird. In this country, in a park. Funny enough, the lamb was not rare, though. It was well done. But it was tender and flavorful <laughs> and delicious. It was good. It was very yeah. good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it came with some uh, roasted potatoes that were excellent and some other sautéed veggies uh, that were nice and a little tzatziki sauce. And ah! I, I even tried the hummus. I, I thought that was good. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't try that, but okay. So, very good. All right. So, that's a good addition. Yep. The Greek. I like that. I like the Greek. You just didn't like the Asian. And, and funny, uh, oh, no, uh, we should, uh, one last thing was the, the dessert. Now, it's a whole separate station, which is interesting. Yeah, Marco Polo, yeah. And Marco Polo. They were pushing the the, the, big, the big thing is like make your own cannoli, where you choose the cream, choose the some mix-ins, and choose this type of shell and all that stuff. I'm not a big cannoli fan. As a as a half Italian, I don't really care for Italian desserts that much. It's just, <laughs> it's just how I am. So I I didn't go for it. Uh, someone in our group did though, and uh, said it was very good. So it was a, a very good cannoli. There you go. So I mean, and if, if you like cannolis, it's that's just fun that you get to make your own. Mm -hmm. You know. You kind of tell them what to do, and then they do it for you right there in front of you. Make it fresh. So that's, that's cool. Uh, I, I did think, though, I, 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 it's interesting that they did it for this one place. In every one of the other cafeteria lines, uh, the dessert always comes first. 
And I know, and we knew even, even as kids, like they always do that because you're you're the you're the most hungry. You're just getting in, and you also haven't picked your food out yet. So you'd probably just be a pig and just pick a bunch of desserts because it looked good. Yeah. And then later on, you'd realize, oh shit! Uh, but I got all this food now. What do I need this dessert? I should have downsized it or not got it at all. Yeah, it's sneaky. But you'd be stuck with it, and uh, be on your tray, and then you're in a park. You'd be like, oh, what the hell? Let's just get it. Right. You know. And so yeah. And now I wonder by separating it as a separate uh, counter or a section, you know, it's if that's actually shooting themselves in the foot. Now they're going to sell that dessert at that one particular location. Mm. And it was also fun to note that the the longest line, because now it's all kind of counter service where you go and each person gets their food put on the plate as you order, and the line forms behind you. Yeah, it's uh, like uh, it's sort of like Fast Food Boulevard, or the Springfield Land, and Universal. Same kind of thing. Yeah. All these different stations, you go, you yeah. get your food, and then you go pay at a but, separate but register. But you still pay if the register is separate. Yeah. Like you do in the other lines in, in Bush Gardens. Uh, but uh, fun to note that the Italian one had the biggest line, or the yeah. only line, really. The other yeah, ones, the only line. The only ones you walked up to uh, whenever you wanted, and then Italy had the line. Yeah. So in the end, that's what people want. So I kind of still feel this is a misstep, actually. They really should have just kept the Italian the way it was. And not that anything. It should have. Or it was fine. At the very least... Two of the, whatever, the, there were like five stations maybe. Maybe two of the five should have been Italian instead of just one. All right. Yeah. At least. Or just kept it the exact way it was and just added a Greek dish. Sure. <laughs> just added hummus and lamb <laughs> and otherwise served it in the original spot. It was fine. Yeah. It was fine. It looks nice, though. I'll say that. They made it look nice. Yeah, I was cool. worried about that, too. It, animated, and it does look fine. Animated menus and the beautiful lighting and the ceiling and everything it was done up really yeah, well yeah it looked cool so whatever it's it's fine I, I i was fine with it overall i still got my best italian meal at a park ever that i always get there and i was happy you know oh they they fixed the breadsticks finally <laughs> so that's where it actually improved a little bit there's an area where they improved um they finally figured it out after all these decades <laughs> instead of serving those shitty stale breadsticks uh like a poor man's olive garden breadstick <laughs> Now it's like bread bites, but they get to you like fresh and soft and delicious, not stale and nasty. They fix those. And you said they even improved the pizza. Yeah. So then the pizza, which I think you could have gotten there. There was a station with pizza. Yeah. Right? Pizza and salad. Yeah. One yeah. Of the stations. Uh, but I didn't at, the, at that time. I got it later on in the Fest House of all places. But they always had pizza in the Fest House. So that's not anything new. And yes, uh, better than it has ever been. Uh, now it's like a flatbread style pizza the kind of thing you see in a lot of the the chain restaurants have as a as an appetizer though those flatbreads and um still not the greatest thing you've ever had but 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 good better than it used to be so they've improved in a couple areas yeah so that's cool and still the best damn carrot cake ever so yeah the carrot cake was great that chocolate fudge cake is still excellent the red white and blue jello is still a lot of fun yeah we even got that that's know? still a delicious dessert actually oddly enough I like the apple cobbler. I think I liked it the most of anyone. Yeah. We all kind of sampled it. Uh, so, yeah, we ate at the, uh, the new Marco Polo's. We had the Fest House at one point. We also had the, the Smoke House. Well, the Trap House, depending yeah. on uh, who you want to talk to. Uh, Smokers, Trap House uh, <laughs> in, uh, in New France. And that's uh, that was good. That was still very good. Barbecue, excellent. Yeah. Great smoked food, ribs, brisket. I'm always amazed at the chicken. How good the chicken is there, and that was interesting at the at the at the trap house where I felt like the portions have kind of grown. I want to say <laughs> yeah. like it was they're piling more food than they ever did on those plates. Yeah, um, we ended up sharing one at one point because it got to the point where it, it was, was like, that one. It was we the barbecue. We didn't need our own. It was just too much. Right, we shared um, a sampler. It was enough. It, it's 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 becoming like family style almost now. <laughs> it's like it's it's really crazy. And the Italian was so much. Yeah, it was just piled on. I, none of us cleaned our plates because it was so much. You know, you, you won't go hungry at Bush Gardens. Right, that's for sure. They still got it. Still got they it. Still got it. So great. And we'll go from that to where they still don't got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> music. It's very important to the park experience. More important than you realize, folks. It really is. And we were unhappy to find out that uh, the park does not play the uh, the original soundtrack stuff in a lot of instances. It seemed that, and it, and and we and we don't really know. We don't. We've, it's been five years since we've been there. Uh, it seemed that though it was maybe because of the summer nights uh, promotion that they're running right now. 
uh, or they were running when we were there. I shouldn't say right now. You can listen to this whenever you want. But um, in, you know, in the summer of 2017 when they were doing this, and I think maybe it's because of that, although they maybe do it all the time now. I don't know. But at a certain point, it seemed like it was 6 o'clock. I think we figured out, right? Yeah. At around 6 p.m., they will turn over to Top 40 music. Right, all throughout the park. So I don't know if it's only summer or if it's all season now, but if they're ever open later than 6, they go to Top 40. Uh, that's bullshit. Oh, yeah. I have nothing good to say about that. There's, there's, there's no excuse. Anyone can listen to that shit anytime they want. I don't need to pay 60 plus dollars to enter an amusement park for a themed experience to hear it. Yeah. It really pissed me off. Right? It pissed us off. I mean, it, it ruined our, our experience to a little bit. It marred it. It was definite. It was, a, it was a major downgrade. Yeah. And they even had live and local. They had like a, like a local band playing covers. Yeah. Out in, in front uh, of Griffin. Yeah. Out in front of Griffin. Actually in the uh, Aquitaine. And no one was really watching them. Yeah. There was like five I, people. I, I felt kind of bad for them. Both nights. But at the same time, they shouldn't be there. It's just, that's not what you go to Bush Gardens for. Right. <laughs> you know, if you're going to have a band, have it be themed to the country that it's in, if right. anything. You're not going just for American, you know, alternative rock band. Mm-hmm. Right? What were they playing? It was something from the 90s. It was something that neither one of us had heard since the 90s or something. It was like a... Yeah, were they playing Matchbox 20? It was a Matchbox 20 song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, what the hell? They are playing that. They were playing uh, Maroon 5 and all this stuff. Yeah, it's not the environment for that. There's plenty of places for that, but not there. Bush Williamsburg has a unique, uh, has a unique environment and a unique theme, and they've usually always stuck to it. And I hate when they go out of it and feel they have to to, to become what everybody else is. You have enough right. options for that. Be what you are. People do love it. You've you've lasted. The park itself is now forty plus years old. You're doing it. You're making it. Just s- stick with what you got. It's great shit. Right. It's annoying when they try to go, you know, Disney a little bit with like that fairy tale kids show yeah. in the Fest House or even for Bolton to an extent. And it's annoying when they try to go more regional park like Six Flags with this live and local thing or the, yeah. or the top 40 soundtrack. It's just, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like you don't have anything to draw from. It's <laughs> yeah. like you have all of European history. I mean, come on. Yeah. You have your own identity. Just embrace it and go with it. People do like it. Yeah, they do. They do like it. And when you go a little too far off the path, they reject it, as we said earlier. So, ah, I just, it's so frustrating. The lack of imagination, I feel, of some of these, these higher-ups and that work in that company and in that park in particular. Like, just, God damn it! <laughs> you know? And, and yeah, and they still, there's still things they haven't done. You know, you could stick with your theme and have a live music act at, at night, but twist it into what you are. Sure. They could still do that. There's still things they're not doing, and it's just, just do it. So that, that kind of stuff, yeah, that, that sucked. Taking us out of the, the whole thing for a little bit there. And I wonder uh, if that kind of thing is working to, to get younger people into the park at night. Uh, I mean, when we were there, it kind of seemed like it was working. Yeah, it was a, it was a little busy. Because... At night, yeah, it, 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 there was still a bunch of people there, and and you said at the time it was bullshit that they closed at, did they close at 10? At 10, yeah. Yeah, the place was still rocking and rolling with a lot yeah. of people. Well, that was the thing that just, yeah. It, and it's it, like, adjust your hours, what are you doing? It's like, yeah, if you're going to do summer nights and you're going to turn the, the park into like a, you give it like this, this rock pop scene overlay for the evening, then at least still with the midnight to then compensate for it, you can't do that. So now people are there, they're having a good time, because it seemed like people would actually come to the park later. Like, the uh, the lines, like, kind of uh, inflated at night. Yeah. All of a sudden, Griffin was, like, you know, just a station wait all day, and then at night it was, like, a wait, <laughs> you know? But now if you're going to do that, then you got to stay open to to make it work. You can't, you know, you you, you want to do this thing, uh, this, 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 this event, but then you also don't want to stay open late. You can't do that. I mean, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. And then everybody just kind of was like left with nothing to do and they all had to leave early. So it was yeah. stupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did not like that summer. Yeah, that, if it was, that was the worst thing. I mean, we were not happy with Invader, but my biggest gripe about this visit was, was that. Yeah. Was, and- was the summer nights, the whole thing. It was bullshit. And I guess with that promotion, they had to add all of these speakers around the park to, to play the music, to pump out... To, I guess they get a 
bigger sound. Yeah, because so they had like PA set up, just bare, just out in the open. Yeah, totally and it exposed. Looked like shit. Yeah, totally exposed. Not, not even trying to hide it. Yeah, that was annoying too. Because in the daytime you saw that shit, and it was like, yeah. oh come on, because it really does take you out, you know, more than you realize. It. The second night, because we, we were expecting it, uh, we were a little less bothered by it. But the first night it was very jarring. Yeah, I remember. Like I just felt like I couldn't think a little bit. Like it was really getting in the way of the whole thing. That's unfortunate. And then even in the daytime, um, they weren't playing top 40. They were playing the theme music. But I feel like a few things uh, have changed or gone by the wayside. I felt like they were playing... I don't know if they're doing the bluegrass anymore in New France. They were playing... No, they were just playing... They are like, playing contemporary country. Yes, that's what they were doing. So that yeah. has changed just, I guess, maybe for good. Mm. Like, that bluegrass is gone. That I didn't like. Uh, oh, and then uh, and Bradbury Square plays 60... It goes, it goes or, back and forth. Yeah, it's like every... I don't know, two or three tracks or something. You get like, you get handle, you get a little water music, <laughs> and then you get like two or three like 60s pop British songs in a row. And like they, 80s. You know, they, they even went up to some 80s. I guess it all was syncing with Britmania. Yeah. But it's like, the problem is it's like, that's your entry plaza though. It's like, right. it's yeah. one thing if they, were, if they were just doing that right outside the theater, but like, but I guess right outside the theater is that whole entry plaza. So it's like, it, it, yeah, you can't do that guys. Mm. Uh, that was unfortunate too. So it, the music has still eroded away a little bit throughout the whole thing, but it was the worst with that stuff at night. What about operations, though? It seemed like oh, they yeah. were running the rides really slow. Yeah. Or, or, or the crews were slow. It, it seemed like it had fallen off from from what I remember from years ago. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, like, so bad. Uh, I've seen a lot worse, so... But it was noticeable. But it was noticeable for that place. Yeah. Operations weren't as tight as, the, as I remember them. Yeah. The park used to pump shit out pretty well and well it was it was it wasn't terrible but it was not as good as it used to be yeah all right the uh only a couple things i want to mention i don't think it's gotten any worse than where it was at five years ago but uh still uh you mentioned it with invader there's a, a real time period crisis in that park when they can't <laughs> yeah. figure out what time period they want to do anymore but you know, it used to make it used to be uniform they like had they picked like a, a couple decade period and then that's what every country was represented in that time period now it's like all over the place again it's like it's 60s british invasion uh when you walk in and then it's like old world england like by the time you get to the the, the squire's grill certainly you know mm -hmm. in the same land and then you know verboten has got cars in it it's supposed to be like today or something right or I thought it was supposed to be like or it has like a 60s edge or to it's it. 60s so they went 60s with some things but then and then Invader went back, like, further back than anything else used to be. And, yeah. Uh, Tepesto, too, would have to be at least 1960s or something with Daredevil. Or it could or be it turn of the century. Yeah, turn of the century, I guess. Maybe. I, I don't know. Everything's all over the place, though. They can't figure it out. Yeah. Well, you know, Loch Ness was always more modern day-ish. Oh, well, the diving bell. Yeah. And that stuff. I don't know. I mean, it was never perfect, I suppose, but it's it's like it's it worse. was more cohesive. It's than worse than ever. It though. is now. Now, yeah, it's all over the place. I just want to mention that real quick. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a big thing, but you know that that I can even overlook for the most part. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so whatever, but uh, and uh, I just want to mention the uh, the merchandise, the Heritage series. There's now a new Heritage collection of T-shirts. The park's doing. <laughs> um, they're uh, they're banking in on uh, a couple of the old classics. Uh, we saw pretty early on a big bad wolf shirt. Yeah, uh, and it was like, what? Wait a minute! And uh, you know, it's not old. It's not old merchandise left over. This is new, new newly printed stuff. Uh, they're printing this today in 2017. Uh, it says on the on the tag, it's, it's 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 a heritage collection. So they decided to go back and print out some old. Uh, some, some merchandise or shirts, really, for uh, for old stuff that's no longer there. So they had Wolf. Uh, they had uh, a couple of shirts with uh, the original. This goes back to before we even knew the park. Uh, the original, like, mascot or a couple of mascots used to have custom characters. I think it was, like, a fox and and a knight. It was, like, a, this, it was like this fox character kind of for the kids. And maybe, like, a knight was for the teenagers or something. I don't know. Whatever. They had a hat that had wolf on it, and it had a bunch of different. It had a bunch of attractions. attractions on it, but that, it had that was wolf weird. And it had Le Mans. I it had Le Mans, but then also had the train, which is still there, yeah. and then locked this, which is still there. So that was yeah. kind of didn't make any sense because it's mm. like stuff is not there, stuff is there. <laughs> it, it's kind of weird. 
And then it was the least prevalent of all of the uh, the heritage stuff. Only had it in one location, as far as I could tell. Uh, they had a Drakenfire shirt. They fucking did it! Mm-hmm. Those bastards. They had to have a Drakenfire shirt. So, of course, I had to get it because <laughs> whatever. I mean, all my personal feelings aside, like, I had to get it. I mean, I wasn't going to not give them the money. Yeah. Like, whatever. You got me. You got me, Bush. Got me right in the heart. That was in the Fest House gift shop. So, uh, appropriately right closest to where that ride was. So... I'm sure that was no accident. But I got one, so I finally, after all these fucking years, I have a Drakenfire t-shirt. There you go. So, it's amazing. Yeah, it was it was funny uh, because, you know, I wore my Big Bad Wolf shirt from <laughs> yeah. whenever it was, 2008, mm-hmm. I think. And, you know, I said, yeah, of course I'm going to wear my Wolf shirt, I'm going to stick it to the park. And then I see the, that they're selling Wolf shirts, and it's like, they're sticking it to me! Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Didn't work. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I'm torn on it because it's like it's cool, but you should have kept the rides. Of course, <laughs> it's like fuck you. <laughs> uh, at least in the case of the wolf, like, and Drunken Fire, a little more of a unique circumstance. But I mean, the wolf absolutely should be there, and it's ridiculous <laughs> it's, <laughs> that it's gone. It also was there much more recently too, so I put the the shirts out again. As heritage stuff, it's like, what the fuck? I mean, why don't you just keep it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anything else? You got anything else to add? Oh, still rocking the Clydesdales. Oh, I thought they'd uh, yeah. taken those out because they had did. taken them out in all of their yeah. other parks. Every other now SeaWorld parks and entertainment uh, location has uh, abandoned. The stables are just sitting there as abandoned buildings. They're starting to tear them down and replace them in, in some instances in a couple of the Sea Worlds. And now, just this one park, Williamsburg, though, still has them. They still have the photo op and everything. Yeah. Like, they're really still pushing them. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see it, uh, but also surprised. Oh, I kind of didn't like that they still had some of the uh, Food and Wine Festival booths up. Uh, they kept a couple yeah. of them. That was weird. Because it's, it's especially weird because. Some of them are not European themed. Like they had a, a Hawaiian one, then yeah. they had a Caribbean one. Yeah, and I forget what some of the other ones were. Oh, yeah. the Virginia one is still up. Virginia. Yeah. It's like, yeah. They, I mean, we haven't done food and wine festival, but I, you could argue don't do that at all. Your <laughs> yeah. food and wine festival again. You have enough to pull from with Europe. Just have, have keep your unique spin right to food to, to the food and wine thing. But then to have them up even after the thing's over again just takes you out of the theme as you're walking around. So, I mean, overall, they're still making questionable moves. You like the Vesuvius one, though, right? The Vesuvius Grill? Oh, that was, Outside that was, the entrance that was fine. Yeah. Well, that was just like endless jokes for a while. Well, of course, yeah. Because it was just everything, everything served burnt to a crisp. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Vesuvius yeah. Grill. Yeah. Hope you like your fries burnt. <laughs> <laughs> but then we actually figured they could have done that for real. They could have served blackened... Blackened meat sandwich, you know, some yeah, kind blackened of, chicken, some kind sure. of blackened chicken sandwich, or dessert with like toasted uh, meringue or toasted marshmallows or something. Yeah, or, you, you can do that. Flambe, stuff. flambe, like right? Said, flambe desserts. Uh, you could have right. done something with that. Bananas, Foster flambe, cherries, jubilee, all this stuff. You yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, but instead it was what a pizza cone. <laughs> it was like pepperoni pizza yeah. cone. It was actually the grossest, like, <laughs> like American <laughs> shit stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, like, the stuff that, like, the other other countries can make fun of us over. Like, oh, those dumb fat Americans, they took their American pizza and put it in, like, a cone. <laughs> like, you're eating an ice cream cone, but it's pizza. Yeah. But the Vesuvius Grill, but whatever. Anyway, I'm sorry, go back to your final point. <laughs> uh, um, There's, I know, questionable moves, but also some good moves. Was that yeah, what it was? I mean, the, the, the last ten years has not been the kindest to this park, but... It, it, you know, it's, it's kind of like if it wasn't for Invader, I'd say things are looking up. But Invader is like a real question mark. Yeah, that's the new kind of rise they're going for. That, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, how many more of those are they going to do? Yeah, so it it's still like an uncertain future, I think, for that park. It's a big, like, what the next move's going to be is going to is gonna see uh, or be very telling, I yeah, guess, right? I guess. It's like now we're looking at the next move. What's, what's really next? Right. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, it hasn't fallen as much... It's falling at a slower rate than it was for a while. They really screwed the park up a lot in like a short span, and now it's it's they they stopped the bleeding. 
I guess, so to speak. <laughs> it, it's, it's not as it's not as bad. It, it, it's they're, they're, it's okay. There's a good time to be had there. Oh, definitely. And we definitely found it this time. We made it work. And uh, in all in all, I say I, I had a very very good time and a lot of fun. And I still really love that park. And I'm I'm not ready to give up on it yet. It's all about Alpengeist, but as long as I can keep that ride like forever, I'm not ready to give up on it yet. That park's got a lot of good. It's not too far gone. And I'm almost surprised that I can say that now. After, yeah, actually. In, in a post-Wolf world. <laughs> now that you said it out loud. <laughs> yeah. It's not too far gone. Right. But yet, I was afraid it was going to be an attack. Actually, Verbolden is still a lot of fun, actually, for what it is. And, like, the park itself is, as a whole is, is really great. It's not too far gone. I gotta say. Because right. I think we actually did say that. I think we did. <laughs> the last time. There were some dark times with that park. But I can still enjoy it. You know, one of the biggest gripes we said was the music. And that's the easiest thing to reverse. Oh, yeah. Just put the old discs or reels or whatever it was back. You could change that tomorrow. Yeah. So Easy. just don't switch over to Top 40 at night. That simple. Uh, I, I guess we did a little thing on the, on the car ride back, thinking about what parks we liked the most. Busch Gardens Williamsburg still has to be a contender, I guess, for, for number one, really. I mean, without going through it for real, but it's, it's still up there. It still may be my, my single most favorite park. It's funny, yeah. Even with the uh, the bad moves in the last ten years, it it still is right up there. Yeah, and in some ways, you're the toughest on the ones you love. Yeah. So it's kind of like maybe that's why we're so extra tough on it. Yeah. We it's still like part of the family. We still we, <laughs> we still love it, and you can still have the old the same old great time we used to have. It's it's different. It's not the same as it was, but it's still a great time. I guess it's almost like the park has to say to us. Thanks for writing. Thanks for not giving up on me, guys. Thanks for coming back and giving <laughs> okay. me a chance and letting me show you that you're not going to like er everything I do, but like uh, we're still there for you. Yeah. Or I'm still there for you for a great time. <laughs> yeah. You know, bring the family down, do it. So, thanks for writing. <laughs>